Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will talk about transition words. These are usually words or expressions that help you connect ideas and sentences when you speak or write in English. You can use them to give examples, add or summarize information, give a reason or result, or to contrast ideas. As you can see, transition words might come in handy if you want to speak more naturally, score high on language exams, or simply convey your message more effectively. Let's begin. Number one, more specifically. An easy and effective way to use more specifically in a sentence is to put it at the beginning and treat it like a transition. More specifically, the phrase works really well as a signifier that you're about to expand on what you've said in the previous sentence. You're very welcome to use this transition word in essays. For example, the main reason why I think that young people should live independently from their parents is because this way they're bound to become more independent. More specifically, they will have to rent their own accommodation, pay utility bills, cook meals for themselves, and make decisions without the help of their parents or siblings. But more specifically? Number two, similarly. We use similarly to say that something is similar to something else. Newspapers no longer check facts. Similarly, magazines do that too. Similarly, on your planet I look like you. Number three compared with this transition word is used when you juxtapose or contrast two or more things with each other, looking at similarities and differences. We can use it at the beginning or in the middle of a sentence. Compared with his previous books, this new one is terrible. The year 2022 is much more eventful compared with the previous ones. Small population compared with some. If you want to have a better level of English compared with the one you have now, then join our course from Advanced to Proficiency. During the course of seven weeks, we will be honing your English skills so that you can speak this language fluently without thinking about grammar and vocabulary. If you want to finally master articles, learn how to accurately use complex grammar constructions and advanced vocabulary in speaking or writing, and communicate freely on challenging topics then sign up using the link with a promo code down below, as the course is about to start. I'm really excited to see you all at our first lecture. Number four, as opposed to. We use as opposed to to contrast two items. Some people think that you should post better content as opposed to more content which makes it robbery as opposed to burglary. Another interesting transition word is besides. Besides can be used as a preposition, meaning in addition. For example, do you have any shoes besides these ones? In addition to these ones? It can also be used as an adverb with the meaning of moreover. This trip was extremely boring. Besides, we didn't even have time to visit all the places we planned to. Keep in mind that besides is a little less stiff and formal to use than in addition and moreover. Number six, on top of that. An even more informal version of besides is on top of that. We usually use this transition phrase while speaking. I have my business plan to finish, a few calls to make. On top of that, I have to make dinner. And um, on top of that, I'm rather shy. Number seven, nevertheless. We use nevertheless to add surprising information or something in contrast to what was already said or written. Josh hurt his leg while running. Nevertheless, he continued the competition and finally won. Nevertheless, it is fascinating. Number eight, in contrast. This transition phrase is used when two things are different from each other. His loud public personality is in contrast to his mild private life. David hates going to the gym. In contrast, his little sister loves it. A position in contrast to what we are. The next two phrases are used to show cause and effect. Number nine is therefore. He twisted his ankle and therefore he was unable to play soccer. This sentence, therefore, shows the fact of the first action, that he twisted his ankle. Farewell, therefore, hero. A similar transition word is as a result. She studied conference interpreting and as a result found a job at The Hague. Again, I'm showing the result of the action. Likely saved civilization as a result. 
Now, the next few linking phrases and words are commonly confused by students because they all look very similar to each other and have a similar meaning. They are although, even though, just though, despite, and in spite of. Although, even though, in spite of, and despite are all used to link two contrasting ideas or show that one fact makes the other fact surprising. Despite the expected snow, they still drove to the airport. Despite the fact that he has a girlfriend. In spite of wearing a sweater and a jacket, he was still cold. In spite of being back at Hogwarts, I feel more alone than ever. Even though he was fired, he still found a way into the building. Even though he was only a movie character. They can all be used at the beginning or in the middle of the sentence. Although it was cold, we spent a few hours outside. Or, we spent a few hours outside, although it was cold. Although actually it was all a fake. The main difference between although, even though, in spite of, and despite is that they are used with different structures. After in spite of and despite, we use a noun, despite the rain, gerund, which is like the ing form of a verb, despite meeting her early, or a pronoun, despite that. After although and even though, we use a subject and a verb, although he likes biology, even though he was fired, even though it is slightly stronger and more emphatic than although. Finally, though can either be used in the same way as although, though they speak English, they have difficulty understanding the Scottish accent. Or it can also go at the end of the second phrase, which is most common in spoken English. I didn't understand a word from the movie as it was in Chinese. The actors were great though. Let's move on. When you have been giving a lot of details to a person and want to give a conclusion or a summary, you can use in short. In short, I believe that we can cut production costs by implementing these ideas. Overall. We use overall to indicate that you are talking about a situation in general. Overall, it was a good speech, even if it was a little long. Overall, pretty good. All things considered. The meaning of this phrase is pretty straightforward. It means that you are making a judgment after taking all the facts into account. Considering all things. All things considered, I don't think that you should sign the contract until all your demands are met. Well, not too bad, all things considered. Number 19, for the most part. This expression means mostly or usually. Professors, for the most part, are firmly committed to teaching, not research. For the most part, yes, they are. Finally, the last phrase for today is to recap. We use it to say something again as a summary. To recap, these are the reasons why I don't agree with your idea. So, to recap our discussion, to recap, in this lesson we covered 20 transition words that will boost your English skills and allow you to speak more fluently. Make sure to write simple sentences with the ones that were the most challenging for you down below. I will see you all very soon in the next videos. Have a lovely and sunny day. Bye bye!